Hello and welcome to another Man on the Run tutorial for the Road Less Traveled series. My name is Patrick Barrett. I'm the executive producer for the Road Less Traveled series as well as uh, did the special effects. Today we're going to continue with Road Less Traveled 3 with a scene at the very beginning where the character Damien Locke has to run past a soldier down the stairs and he uses a supernatural speed. Um, or for you, uh, you vampire geeks out there, I guess you'd call it celerity level 2 probably, or something like that. So uh, so here is the original footage we have. We have a soldier standing, pointing a gun in the area that uh, Joe Holt will be standing with Damien Locke up here. This is uh, Steve Sample, and he stands there for a bit. Then we have some extra footage of blank shot. Then we have footage of Joe running on, stopping, and then walking down the stairs. The reason he's walking is we need a lot of footage to create a nice clear effect. Otherwise, uh, when you speed it up, um, you don't have as much to play with. So from this raw footage, we're going to take it and make it look something like this. A nice little super speed down the stairs. The first thing we have to do is split apart this raw footage. So I'm going to highlight the footage and do a Control D to duplicate it one time. And we're going to cut out right to where Steve Sample is. And we're going to go out and find the rough section where Joe is already standing there. So right around there. Now the reason we're doing that is he'll jump out. We're going to do a close-up shot in the final footage. And we're going to line the two up here. And we're going to hide the one with Steve. Because uh, we're gonna we're gonna cut this down one more time. So Joe stands there. He looks looks forward, looks back, and as soon as he steps, that's where we're gonna cut. So we're gonna duplicate it one more time, cut that down, and cut the other one above. So that way, our third one that's going to be the running part of the effect. To first make it look like they're all standing there together, we need to take and, and cut out Steve in this one. So I'm going to hit the pin tool up here, or you can hit G on your keyboard. I'm going to do a rough mask around the edges. I'm going to come up and go roughly around the stairs. Let's do the stair below him. And then right around his shadow. We'll come up the post. We also have that light up there, and that light flickers. So that makes it a little annoying. To, uh, to deal with this. We're going to cut around that as well. So I'm going to come in here and do a quick and dirty mask around that. And then we'll come out and we'll close it. And there we go. So if I pull this up and let me hide these layers, you'll see what I just did. So we just cut right around Steve and the light and everything else. It's a little jagged. Um, just to make sure we're, to smooth it out, we'll highlight it and press F to bring up the feather of the mask. And we'll put it out like 5 or 10. You get a nice little smooth edge to it. So now when we add back in the original footage of Joe standing there, it doesn't look any different. So with Steve, without Steve. So it shows him in his shadow nicely. Then if we come forward, we'll put on this new footage. We're now going to take and, uh, and speed Joe up. So I'm going to come to the first frame, highlight that speed footage, right click, go time, enable time remapping, or hit control alt T. That adds a time map effect to it. Stopwatch is already clicked automatically. We'll click this little button here to make a keyframe that shows up. And then we're going to come all the way out to where he's just off screen. So right there. We're going to hit another keyframe. Now what that does is between those two keyframes we can expand or contract them to make him go faster or slower. So if I actually come to right around here you'll see he moves down the stairs because we're speeding up the footage. What we want to do is it's about 10 seconds long so we're going to cut it down to like 20 frames. So that's uh, two thirds of a second. So if we're at 217, uh, we want to go to about eight, 
seven, something like that. That goes, that looks about right. So we'll pull that keyframe in all the way. And whenever I do that, you'll see within one second, he's down all the way. So now we have him shooting down the stairs, but we want to add some effects to that, um, especially what goes in that first 20 frames. So uh, we're going to add a couple of blurs. First one will be a CC radial fast blur, and let's add a lens blur on there as well. So if I pull up this effects tab, we can go to this first frame again, and we're going to click on the stopwatch for center and amount. Uh, we're going to put this at zero. Then we're going to go back to roughly where he's off screen again. We'll click these to make some more keyframes. Put this up to about 15. And the center, we're going to uh, we're going to actually map that across the board. So we're going to come to this first keyframe, and the center of it is this little crosshairs. And right now you don't see anything because the effect's at zero. But as we move along, you'll see I'm going to animate it so that as he moves down, I'm going to center it on him. And that creates a new keyframe every single time I do that. We'll go down these last few frames. Just put it right like mid-stomach. And we'll come to that last keyframe and put it just off screen. There we go. I'm going to actually, on this uh, amount, I'm going to right click and go keyframe assistant easy ease. That changes the symbol there. It just makes it a little smoother transition from 0 to 15. So it will automatically animate between those two. So if I go to, let's say, the middle, you'll see I'm at 8.7 without having to put a keyframe in there. And we're going to go do the same thing for the lens blur want to uh, to come to the very beginning and we're gonna add keyframes for these five I'm gonna turn the iris down and then we're gonna come to the very end again and we're gonna change the let's say about five is good bump these up to seven and then put the rotation and the brightness up a little bit as well. So like four and five. Yeah, so it's nice and light. I'm going to do the same thing on these. Right click, or you can press F9 and do easy ease on those. So if I close these up to show you, we have Joe standing there and then the effects kind of meld. They go a little fast on, but we want him to look like he's blurry. So the problem with this, though, is that we're blurring everything else around him. So oh, to get around that, what we can do is we're going to cut Joe out, and then we're going to animate that mask. So that would go something like this, where we uh, will highlight this area, grab the pin tool again, or press G, and then we're going to highlight around him. So it cuts him out. And that way the effects are only applied to this part. And then what we do is, uh, as, as we go through the footage, we can animate. So now we go to the mask. Mask path will click on the stopwatch. And uh, create the shape. I think we'll come down here and create another keyframe. And then come back to this one. And then you can take the arrow tool. And you can come in here and make it go right around his shoulders and his feet. You can even take the whole thing and uh, make it kind of oh, fit around him. So here's the hard part is uh, we're going to have to do this almost every single frame because he moves so much. Get a rough mask around him and then we slowly animate. So if I, sh if I show you, it will animate around him a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead and uh, and pull in all my keyframes from a previous one just to show you. Okay, so jumping ahead here, we now have all my keyframes in place uh, to show you quick how that looks. 
as it's animated down as he runs and goes around the corner. Or an easier way to look at it is without showing the points on the mask. We just see him at the top, the effects start to occur, and he starts blurring more and more, and he's cut out and jumping off the screen. So, well, now the problem is we don't have anything that shows him or uh, the, the background. So, uh, probably should have done this at the beginning, is we're going to duplicate this layer again. This time, though, we're going to uh, delete these effects that we don't want those on there. And we're also going to delete the mask. And what that does is uh, it still has the time remapping on it, and it still has Joe running. So if I actually uh, turn off that effect layer right here, you'll see it's just him, and it's him doing that run. So he'll be on the bottom. Um, and then we will turn around and add on top this cutout of him with all the effects on it. So now that if I put it right there, you'll see now it's him, and the effects are just on him. So we have this nice little cut part and there we go and he's running down the stairs everything else looks normal at normal speed Steve isn't moving funny the light isn't flickering or anything else and we have just that nice nice little look we have all that part done um, what we want to do is now take these effects and we're going to pre-compose them so we can duplicate them over and over so you highlight those two, we'll go layer, pre-compose, and we're going to call this effects, and move all attributes into new composition. So that creates a new comp that we can play with here. But what I'm going to do is duplicate this out four times. Uh, well, three times, so we have a total of four. Then what I'm going to do is highlight all of them, press T on your keyboard, which will just bring up the opacities of each one. And what we're going to do is stagger. So we're going to do this one at 25% opacity, this one at 50, this one at 75, and then the bottom one at 100. And what that will do will give us a nice uh, trail. If we actually take a look at it now, it doesn't look any different. Even if we turn them on and off, it looks pretty much the same. But what we can do is we have the first one that we're going to keep at 100% and we'll leave it right there. Then we'll move one frame forward. And then I'm going to grab the other three and I'm going to move them up a frame. Then we'll do one frame forward. And we'll grab the upper two and go up a frame. And one frame forward and do that to the last one. Now what we do is we have this nice little trailing effect on top of everything else. So if I start playing through it, I start to get a little trail of him running down the stairs. And creates a nice little look there. Now you can stagger that a little bit more. Um, you can time remap these uh, again if we need to speed up or slow them down um, and we do it all in one spot so that all four automatically uh, get updated uh, we can add on a sound effect um, and then we can cut in the other parts uh, before and after here so that that's the the quick and dirty way to do that uh, so let's hear let's go back to my final project that we used in the film and uh, we'll bring in we have the cuts beforehand here with Steve and, and Joe as he jumps out. Then we have the effects, then we have the cuts afterwards with him walking. Alright, so if I go ahead and show the whole thing, he cuts, runs. The last thing we can do is add in a sound effect right here, make it look a little bit better. Or sound always helps. Whoosh. And then the startled look from Steve. 
So there we go. Take a couple of still shots, m merge them all together for less than one second to have a nice little whoosh of uh, celerity down the stairs. All right, well, uh, that's the end of this tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, or anything else, please uh, please post, and uh, I'll get back to you. And uh, look forward to making more of these. Thanks.